Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Thursday, January the 17th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's just riff a little bit on boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, underdog, Caleb Plant delivered for us. He is now the IBF super middleweight world champion. He beat Jose Uzcategui. I heard Jose himself pronounce it. We'll go with his pronunciation. It's his name. Uh, let me just say, I wasn't surprised at the outcome, right? And I want the gamblers here online to leave the odds at which they got Caleb Plant in the comment section to this video, right? I was not surprised at the outcome. You had Uskadagi, who's a mid-range hooker, fighting a much more complicated fighter, right? Understand, Caleb Plant can operate outside on his back foot behind a jab. Understand, Caleb Plant is a natural counterpuncher. He's hoping for a guy to be over aggressive in coming forward, trying to be offensive, right? Plant is a guy who can take a quick sidestep and as you make the adjustment, hit you with counters. He knocks down Uskadegay twice on excellent counters. Understand too, that while Uskadegay had to operate at mid range, Plant, of course, like Tyson Fury, could operate inside as well as outside. So you have a great round where Plant keeps Uskadegay, a mid-range hooker, hoping to keep things straight. In other words, Uskadegay, excuse me, Uskadegi wanted to come in and be parallel to you so he could use two hands. And here you had Plant with a shoulder right in the middle, turned off at the side, giving a side profile that completely baffled the former champion. Now, what did surprise me in the fight and gives me a little bit cause for concern, and I know the underdog won, he cashed the tickets for us, right? Greater than even money. But what did concern me was just the amount of energy that Caleb Plant had to expend in beating Uskadegi, right? Understand, the former champion is one of the best athletes in boxing, right? You noticed that this was a guy who could be high energy all the way through a fight, right? He wilts Andre Durrell in both fights before this fight, right? So I understand this is really a better athlete than most of the guys in boxing, right? This category, young guy, you know, not a 35 year old who's going to get tired. But still, this was a predictable mid range hooker, right? I was surprised that Plant seemed really drained at times late in the fight. Understand, too, the heights of the guys. Plant 6'1. Uskadegi is 6'2". They're fighting at 168 pounds, right? I suspect that Plant is a little bit weight drained at the weight, right? Now, what I'm going to say next is going to surprise some people, but understand, I feel that Plant is much more advanced and I mean much more advanced. This guy's defensively blessed. This guy is switching up styles, right? This guy is marrying lateral movement. His back foot game is a bit of an illusion because the guy is setting you up for power counters, right? He's offensive on his back foot. Understand this guy is much more advanced 
in terms of what he does in the ring than much bigger names like Callum Smith, right, who is a tighter mid-range hooker, right, and than Canelo. Just food for thought. Understand, if you're looking for a live underdog going forward, I need for you to look at the new champ. Now, I believe the folks in boxing have it a little bit wrong, right? I know Freddie Roach was out there saying that Adrian Broner, if he had discipline, would be fighting at 135, right? I think these boxers are putting themselves at risk by trying to fit themselves in a small divisions, right? All you have to do is look at Plant at the end of this fight. This is a guy who's still in his 20s, right? And Plant just looked completely tired, right? Completely tired in a fight where he was the one who just logistically was in control for most of the fight. In other words, after I watched the first six rounds of this fight, I believe the champ had been knocked down two times and Plant had dominated him the other rounds, right? So as I was watching the fight, I thought, okay, great. Plant is way ahead now. He can relax a little bit and exhale because not even these judges could rob him. Right? Now he can be on his back foot, throw some combinations, play it cautious, close to the title. Right? The desperate person in the second half of the fight would be the guy who's way behind, the guy who tasted the canvas twice, the guy who didn't look like he had won a round for the first half of the fight. But yet in the second fight, Plant started to look like, dare I say it, Billy Joe Saunders. Right? The guy's energy level just started to crater. Right? So I'm watching the fight and I realize that this is a sport where some guys beat you on stamina. Right? There, you know, you might start the fight ahead of them. Let's say you're at 100 and talent wise, they're at an 85. Right? But by the time you get to the eighth or ninth round, right? You might, you may have dropped 30 points, right? So you might be operating at 70. The guy who started at 85 might be operating at 80. So to me, plant and everyone's body is different, needs to seriously consider jumping to 175. Now let's talk about the kind of fighter who would give him problems. Right? As I said, I think he beats Callum Smith. Right? Callum Smith doesn't look defensively blessed to me. When I said Callum Smith is a tighter mid-range hooker, understand, just like Buscategui wants to face you, wants to throw hook, hook, hook. Right? Callum Smith wants to face you. The difference between the two guys is Buscategui, when he's throwing hooks, he's open for counters right? His hands are about here. So a counterpuncher can feast on him. Callum Smith, if you look at his guard, has a tighter guard. So Callum Smith is leaning in. Smith's punches are shorter than Uskadegi's punches. Less opportunity for a counterpuncher. But again, sooner or later, someone is going to figure out that Smith is weight drained and is 6'3", fighting at 168 pounds, right? Young guys can pull this off for only a few years. When a guy is 6'3", and he's fighting at 168, you got a lot of body to hit, right? I believe Caleb Plant could beat Callum Smith from the inside out. Right? Let me also say, too, with regard to 168 pounds, because it's worth mentioning. I see a guy like Caleb Plant, and the skill level just jumps off the page at you. Right? He's so talented, folks, that he's bluffing 
to set up punches. He'll come in and he'll go and not throw the punch, hoping that you move this way so then he hits you with the other hand, right? This guy is wired in a way where he can improvise in a way few in boxing can, right? Few. Let me also say too, I know the guy doesn't have a long track record of facing high-level contenders, right? Okay, that's true. When you see a guy like this, who clearly has the talent on film, right, clearly has the talent on film, where you're looking at him and you just notice that the guy is able to land flush counters, right, flush counters. You notice the other guy is throwing punches and Plant is just moving his body, right, blocking shots, right, you know, using his body as armor is stepping to the side, can turn an opponent, right? In this fight, Ascategi is looking at him, plant moves. Ascategi is looking at him, plant moves. The guys doing the telecast then started to say, you know, Ascategi is not doing enough here to win the fight. The reason his volume was dampened is the same reason when guys fought Floyd Mayweather almost across the board, look at the copy box numbers, their volume was dampened, right? Just look at Canelo's performance in his last fight against Golovkin and compare it to his fight against Floyd Mayweather. A guy with movement will take away the volume of an opponent who needs to get in a rhythm because the movement disrupts the rhythm. So as Kadegay, you know, Plant's playing a distance game. He's shooting a jab. As Kadegay comes over to it to rough him up, right? As Kadegay wants to get in a mid-range hooking two-handed attack mode, a rhythm, right? And then, of course, Plant just moves to the side. By the time as Kadegay gets to that spot, Plants move back. Worse yet, plants hit him with corners, uh, with, with counters, right? He's made him pay for the turning. So when I see a guy like Plant, and the talent is obvious, right? Um, casual fans may not have seen it. This was the best play on the board, right? If you question the level of his opposition, then the easy way to play a fighter like this is to take him, especially since he's under the radar, right? He was an underdog in this fight. It's to take him to win, right? By definition, he's an underdog. You're getting great odds. You're getting underdog odds. And to hedge the play with the other guy by KO. Or to be provocative, if it's a high over under, you can take Plant to win, and then you can just take the under if that over under is, let's say, nine and a half or more. Right? Understand, Plant did get two knockdowns in this fight. Right? This is a guy with power. And it's the best kind of power. It's the surprise kind of power. Where the other guy is turning and is not expecting to get hit. Other guy doesn't even see the punch. That's how slick Plant is, right? So there's a chance here. One of the knockdowns was almost a flash knockdown. It wasn't, but it looked that way. The second knockdown, you could tell Uskadegi was badly hurt, right? Just understand, if you question the level of Plant's opposition, if you believe that he's in against a guy who hits too hard, who might catch him, who might have tricks up his sleeve, right? A James DeGale or someone like that, a dude who's changing angles and stuff like that, then my point to you is you can take Plant to win at underdog odds and you can hedge the play with either the under, if it's a high under, so you get both guys. Plant gets the early knockout, you're in the penthouse. You took him simply to win and you won on the hedge, right? Or you can take the other guy as the hedge by KO, right? I'm guessing the 
odds on Plant have now dropped now that he has the title belt. Right? I'm guessing those odds have now dropped. So whoever he's fighting, if Plant is the underdog, the KO prop would probably be better than even money. Now let's talk about the kind of guy who might beat Plant. There's a difference in the stamina level, at least to these eyes, between Plant and someone like Bivol at 175 pounds. Right? Understand Bivol is the kind of guy who throws so many punches and is so active right and is so non-stop and who himself can counter that I believe that even if you feel plant at the start of the first round has more talent than Bivol who's also unbeaten I believe plant in the second round of the fight excuse me the second half of the fight would have a problem against that kind a freak athlete. Right? Guys who don't give a technician time to think. Who themselves can vary their offensive attack. Right? As Kadegi is a mid-range hooker. There wasn't much he can do. Bivol is more than a mid-range hooker. He can throw hooks with the best of them. Right? But this guy is a combination puncher, a little bit different person, right, who throws counter combinations. And, quite frankly, one of the secrets to him is he's one of the best athletes in the sport. Right? So that's the kind of guy who would give me concerns fighting a Khaled plan. Right? Floyd Mayweather when interviewers would corner him, Floyd's actually a pretty good interview. When interviewers would corner him, Floyd would name his toughest opponents. And the name that always shocked people, who Floyd has named in interviews as one of his toughest opponents, was Emmanuel Augustus. Right? Now, Emmanuel Augustus had a lot of losses, but Emmanuel Augustus could overwhelm a technician right a guy like plant is doing pattern recognition the kind of fighter he victimizes is a Jose Uscategui a guy who comes in mid-range hooker you know what the guy's gonna do right you know where the guy wants you it's mid-range you know the guy doesn't really have a stick a jab he's gonna come in throwing hooks Right? That kind of guy, a technician can read and say, okay, I know what's going on here. Right? A guy who comes in and is throwing the kitchen sink and is coming in at different angles, who is unorthodox. Right? Understand technicians. They see the punch coming. They'll say, okay, he's throwing a hook to my head. They'll put a hand up. Right? I believe a Caleb Plant, if they were the same weight class, would have an easy time with Jaime Munguia. Right? A fighter on the rise, unbeaten fighter, who's a mid-range hooker who likes to hit guys in the side of the head right and in the body with hooks hellacious puncher uh, took out Saddam Ali right the problem is Munguia doesn't have a great jab Munguia likes to throw punches at a certain distance just those two facts would put him at risk against the Khaled plant a bivol and I'm just naming guys who have different styles, right? A Bivol can throw all the punches. A Bivol wants to come in and throw combinations. 
A bivol is higher volume than a Jose Uscategui, right? That's the kind of fighter who would give Plant a hard time. A harder time, in my opinion, than, let's say, a Canelo, I know I'm going to hear from the crowd, so be it, or a Callum Smith, I know I'm going to hear from the crowd, so be it, right? I believe a plant is so advanced that a guy like George Groves, who isn't quite who he was when he beat Chris Eubank, right? Who still has concerns with one of his shoulders. I believe a Caleb Plant would be exactly the wrong kind of fighter for George Groves to fight because guys like Plant are highly analytical. And he would know by the third round whether George Groves still has the jab. You understand what I'm saying. He would know from the distance and spacing and the fight wouldn't be high volume enough to bother him. Someone though like a Chris Eubank, who I know Groves beat, trust me, I picked Groves here online, right? Chris Eubank can create a shootout, right? He can create some anarchy in the ring. I believe he would be more of a threat to a technician like Khaled Plant than, let's say, someone like George Groves, right? Food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Uh, congratulations on cashing the ticket with the underdog. Nice return here. Keep an eye on him. Khaled Plant, simply put, remains underrated. He is defensively blessed. Not many fighters are, right? His defense is better, quite frankly, than I would say pretty much everyone else in the division, right? You have to go to older guys, uh, Jurgen Bramer, to look at a guy who has the kind of game where he's fooling around with angles, like Caleb Plant did. You saw that in this fight. That second knockdown was masterful. I encourage people to look at the tape, which is up here on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.